What's up everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna be showcasing a feature in FSX 2020 called Know Your Numbers that allows you the ability to check your bag and get accurate carry distances through your bag for each of your clubs. I've noticed on the course that I have a pretty significant gap between two of my wedges, so I added an extra wedge in there to try to fill that gap between those two clubs. And I'm going to be using this software to test to see if that gap is filled properly. You know, I wanna see kind of a nice 10 yard gap between each clubs, whereas right now I have kind of a 15 to 18 yard dead zone. So I added in that extra wedge and I'm going to be using this software and showing you how to use it as well to see if that wedge fills that gap or maybe if I need to consider a different degree a different loft or maybe just something as simple as bending it a little bit stronger, a little bit weaker to kind of get the numbers that I'm looking for. Now, if you're not familiar with FSX 2020, it's a Foresight software that you use with a Foresight product and it offers things like range where you can kind of test different clubs out against each other, um, maybe just practice. You can even do game playing here, but they have another software called FSX Play that has better graphics or there's other softwares as well for gameplay. I typically use this software for things like this, kind of setting my numbers, trying out new balls, new clubs, and checking things like that. So follow me along in this video as I use the Know Your Numbers feature in FSX 2020. This is something that's really beneficial to a lot of people just to know your carry numbers and kind of test out clubs throughout your bag. I know a lot of people don't even know this actually exists. So we'll go through there and I'll walk you through the whole process. Stay tuned for the end of this video as we have a upcoming giveaway and make sure you're liked and subscribed so you get notified when that video comes up. Any questions you have, comment them down below or feel free to reach out to us directly and let's get started with the video. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is go to the FSX 2020 software. You're gonna be brought to this home screen and you're going to want to click on improve. So I would highly recommend heading over to the Foresight range. This is just a practice range first to get warmed up. You wanna be warm when you're going in to set your carry distances for your numbers. You don't wanna be going in cold and then gradually you know, getting up to your regular swing speed. So just keep that in mind here. But once you're done with that, you wanna head over to Know Your Numbers. This is where we're going to get all our carry distances for the clubs that we want to test. You'll be brought to this screen here and just hit yes. And now we can select the clubs that we want for the test. Again, I'm just testing out my wedges because I wanna see if adding that new wedge kind of set that gap that I'm looking for between my wedges. So I'm gonna go pitching wedge, gap wedge, sand wedge, and lob wedge. Now, if you're planning on testing your whole bag, I would highly recommend breaking this up into different days so you're not just getting you know, completely gassed out and messing with your numbers. I'd recommend doing maybe like your irons one day, uh, maybe wedges another day, and then you can go into a, a driver and hybrid. You'll also notice if you select too many clubs in a test, you're gonna get a little warning here. For accurate gaps, we recommend that you only test groups of clubs in sequence with each other. And then if you select too many clubs, you're gonna get this error, which is we recommend you test no more than eight clubs, which I would agree with. Again, you just don't wanna to get too worn out. So let me unselect these. Now it's gonna to default to how you wanna test your clubs, going from the shortest club to the longest. I would recommend staying on this option. I think it's easier to start with a shorter club, nice and close to the ball and gradually work your way away from the ball, but you can switch it to the other direction if you choose. And then the final thing is gonna ask you the type of ball you're using. Obviously I'm in an indoor simulator. Um, I'm not gonna use a range ball. I would recommend you don't use a range ball to set your carry distances either. Just go ahead and select professional ball and use the exact ball that you play and then start test. And you can see the first screen is telling you, let's start with your shortest club, which is your lob wedge, and take your first shot. Okay, now that you have your selections made, it's going to ask you to start hitting uh, your shots with the shortest club, which is showing me a lob wedge. So you just want to kind of try to hit three of your typical shots on here. You're actually gonna get 10 shots, so if I hit one just absolutely bad or hit one that isn't a good representation of how I hit this specific club, Obviously, you know, you don't want to use that and it's going to give you 10 shots to come up with your three that you're saying, yeah, that's how I hit that specific club. So let me start off hitting my first shot. Now, I don't typically hit a lob wedge with a full swing, but for the sake of this test, say I needed to one day, I might as well just give it a full go. Okay, that first one was hit pretty good. And that's about what I would assume I would carry this is about 85 yards. At least that's what it looked like on there. So we're gonna hit our next shot. That was hit nice. And then let's hit shot number three. See that one was hit a little bit out the toe. So that's probably not gonna go very far. 
actually it got up to the distance, but let's say I just didn't like that shot. Maybe I thinned it, didn't like it. You can see it's saying it's got three shots captured, but I can keep hitting if I want some better shots. I didn't really like that last shot, but it did get to the carry number I'd, I'd assume. But for the sake of the test, I'm gonna hit one more. Yeah, that was hit a lot nicer. Okay. So if I didn't have three good shots by now, again, I have 10 shots where I can just keep on hitting, keep on hitting. And I'm gonna show you, you know, we're gonna go over here now to select shots on the bottom right. And you can see the four shots that I have, uh, shot number one, shot number two, three, and four. Again, I felt like shot three, I hit a little bit out the toe, so I don't know if I necessarily count that. So I can just do this unselect that one and pick shot number four that I think I hit a little bit better. It was off to the right, but I felt like I made better contact with that one. So those are the three shots that I'm gonna say, use these three. These are my three typical shots that I expect for this specific club. And then once you have that, you can go to the next club. Or if you decide, you know what, though I, I didn't hit those shots good, you can also hit keep hitting. So for me, I think those are good for what I would expect from this club. So I'm gonna to go to the next. Now it's telling me to grab my sandwich and take my first shot. And this is the actual club that I'm trying to test that gap with it. I kind of had a dead space of like, you know, 15 to 18 yards. Um, so I added in this specific wedge and this is why I wanted to test this to see, does it fill that gap? That one was hit real bad. So, Again, I can scrap that one, just hit it heavy. Let me just cruise through here and hit a couple more until I get my three ideal shots. And obviously three shots taken, I can keep those, but that second one was hit really, really bad. I do not want that. That was hit really nice. Yeah, let me hit one more because that one was really middled. See if I can just match that. Maybe a little toey, but not too bad. All right, I hit five shots with that new club that I'm testing out. Let's hit the select shot button again and take a look. Okay, so obviously shot number one, just switching clubs. Maybe that one came out a little bit soft, but shot number two is bad. That was hit fat. Obviously, I don't want that. You can see the software is defaulted and it's picked three, four, five, and I would agree, I would say those are the shots that I want for this specific club to base my carry number off of, because those were all hit pretty nice. And now that I have that done, I'm gonna go to the next club. And now I'm gonna grab my gap wedge. So now I'm going from wedges into my set irons, hitting my 48 degree T150. And again, I could just get a 48 degree Vokey, but I like, going as far as I can with the wedges from the set. Um, I just like keeping that same profile. Honestly, if there was a 52 degree in this set, I would get that 52 over using a, you know, Vokey SM9 like I am to fill that gap. Oh, that was hit good. And this club for me is about 110 yards. I can get it up to 115 if I really step on it, but that's not what this test is about. That was hit nice as well. Okay, see if I can just get three nice ones and move to the next. Oh, that was hit fat, unfortunately. Probably not even gonna get to 100. Eh, just to 100, but gonna need another shot. That was all right, it's not my best. But it got to the yardage I needed for the sake of it. Just hit one more. And this is the thing I like about this test is, you know, you get 10, obviously, hopefully you can get three good shots that represent that club in those 10 shots. I can probably move on now. I got four, I only hit one of them bad, but since I have the buffer, I just feel like I just didn't quite catch that last one. Even though it did get to the yardage, that's, that's one of the benefits of, you know, switching these 150s is I did notice those little toey shots seem to still go off these clubs. Yeah, I think I still like the last one better. That was hit probably about the same, but let's just keep the shots that I had minus that bad one. So again, select shots, 
Yeah, see, this is the one I hit off the toe. Probably because I turned it over a little bit, it's still got a good carry yardage, but these are numbers that I am familiar with with my gap wedge. Obviously, these two weren't hit the best, and the software did a good job picking the ones, but it's obviously just gonna pick the longest ones. So let's go to our next and final club, which is my set pitching wedge. And this club, I typically hit about 120. Again, if I step on it or I try to hit like a little draw, I can get it out there further. Staying out to the right a little bit, but it's fine. Yeah, maybe just a little bottomy. That was a little better. Still didn't quite feel like I juiced that one, but got to my carry yardage. And again, make sure through this test you're using your exact ball that you play with. That was bladed. So that one, even though it looks good, you know, on paper, I guess, that was hit thin. I do not want that. Struggling with the pitching wedge right now. That was toey. There we go. It's going to be left, but that felt like I at least hit it out the center. There we go. That was hit right. Like that one a lot. So eight shots with the pitching wedge, just to give you a better spread of different shots. Obviously this one, shot number two, I know I hit really well. I didn't open with the best shot. And shot number three, though, it looks nice and straight and pretty close to my carry yards on paper. Again, that one was bladed. I don't want that one. Hit a couple, uh, number four, pretty bad. 16 would just turn over too much, same with number six, and then I finally started clicking on seven and eight. And again, the software did a good job picking the best three for me, but it's also because they're likely the longest and that's why it picked it. So if you needed to change any of these up, you can kind of unselect them like that, but those are pretty good. All right, so I can go to the next club, though I know in this test that's all the clubs. And then you get the message, that's it. You've hit all your test clubs, view your report. And we want to click on our report here. Okay, so now that I have the wedge test done, I got my report. You know, obviously it's going to select your three good shots from each of those know your numbers tests. And I'm liking what I see so far. So you can see my lob wedge that I've had for the last couple of years. I'm hitting that about 86 yards. Again, I don't really hit that one with a full swing, but it's good to kind of know if I needed to squeeze one out there, what I can get it to. So. 86 yards with the lob wedge, and then we go to the new club that I added to the bag, and that one is at 100 yards, so a little bit better. It fills that gap. So you can see what I've been struggling with on the course. I don't know why I just left that big of a gap in the bag. I guess I just never found like a uh, gap wedge like in the middle or a sandwich in the middle to kind of fill that, that void between my typical 80 to 85 yard club and then right into my 110 yard gap wedge, but um, it looks like this is working out pretty nice. Uh, you can see my gaps between clubs. So I got a 13 yard gap between my lob wedge sand wedge, nine yards between my uh, sand wedge and gap wedge, and then finally 11 yards between my pitching wedge. You notice on the bottom right corner, it gives you a little ideal gap guideline. So from lob wedge to pitching wedge, you want 12 yards between each club. I'm about 10 on average, um, 10 to 11 with just those wedges. So I like where that is um, right there. And then you'll see like your dispersion of the three shots you, you picked on the center line on the bottom left. So I really like that. One thing you can do from here now is so let's say that I'm like, I don't like that 13 yard gap uh, between the sand wedge and the lob wedge. Um, and then it goes into a nine yard gap between the sand wedge and the gap wedge. So what I could do is I can actually take that wedge and I can weaken it a bit, um, you know, bend it weaker to try to close that gap to add maybe, you know, 12, uh, from the lob wedge to the sand wedge, and then 10 from the sand wedge to the gap wedge. So all in all, I hope this helps you out and gives you a better understanding. I know a lot of people just don't even know that this exists. It's super helpful. You know, I use this for my daughter as she gets older. That way she can kind of keep an idea of her carry yardages. Another really cool thing here is you can go down to the email me or I'll just hit the print. And now it's going to send you a nice little cutout card that you can keep in your bag uh, with carry distances. Again, for me, I know my numbers pretty well. I already know what I hit. This is more to kind of show people that this exists. Um, it is helpful for new golfers or people who just maybe don't know their carry distances that well. You can take that little card that it prints out, 
keep it right in your bag. That way, if you need to check or you need reference, you can go ahead and look at that. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope this helped you out. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I'm actually gonna do another test next where I'm going to be testing out some balls. So I'm gonna be testing out the Pro V1X, Pro V1, and the AVX. I know, you know what they claim. This one's you know lower spinning, lower launching, and then as it goes up, it's higher spinning, higher launching. I wanna see from like a mid handicapper perspective, does it actually make a difference? I was fit into Pro V1s. I've been playing Pro V1s for a while, so I'm kind of curious. So I'm gonna be testing out maybe a wedge and a seven iron, because those are the numbers that are important to me. Just looking for a little bit more spin this year. Um, so make sure you subscribe so you can see that video. And I'm also gonna be doing a giveaway in that video with a dozen balls of your choice ship right to you. And I'm also including a pretty sweet Scotty Cameron gift in that as well. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you'll see that video go live and that'll give you a chance to win some free stuff. Thanks again, guys. See you on the next one.